Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I thought it would be a funny thing to do to go over some of the hate comments that I've gotten because, you know, obviously I talked a big game. I came into March Madness on a roll and, you know, I'm going out with a whimper here. Uh, you quickly, just to add some context to this, you can take a look at my bracket right now. It is in the ninth percentile, so it's actually gone up. Um, it was in the 2nd percentile, then it was in the 7th percentile, now it's in the ninth percentile, and basically the only things I have going for me left is Gonzaga and Baylor in the National Championship game, and Gonzaga winning. So that is the only thing I have left. If that does happen, I will get a lot more points, but the thing I'm going to start running into is many other people also have Gonzaga winning, many other people also have Baylor in the Final Four in the Championship game, so even if that happens, it's not like I'm going to shoot up the leaderboards uh, hugely. I might get above the 50th percentile, but obviously guys, I, you know, talked a big game. I called a lot of upsets. Things didn't happen. You know, things got out of hand a little bit. They got out of hand and I'm here, you know, these comments, you know, it is what it is. Some people, they're going to get a little angry. People took my advice. I was like, oh no, people did actually take my advice and we're going to go through some of these comments. I'm going to react to some of these mean comments. We'll start with this one. Uh, my man definitely took too much Adderall before making this vid. See, the, the problem is people don't understand this. Um, I've gotten this before where people say I'm on drugs, things like that. Um, like guys, if I talked to, like made these predictions where I was like, I have Oklahoma uh, beating Missouri. Like, you have to drum it up. You have to make your audience interested. No, I do not do drugs. I'm not on any drugs. I just try and drum it up. I try and make it interesting. That's why I'm always hyper during my videos. That's why I always try and, you know, you're trying to give off a positive energy, a positive vibe so, vibe so people stay engaged with your videos. I'm not going to, you know, sit here and... Well, I think I like them and, you know, they'll be advancing. Like, I, you know, you got to engage yourself. That's what people don't understand. Uh, retired says, you don't know anything. Honestly, I can't deny him. I like the use of all caps there as well. Uh, this big fella says, you have no idea what you're talking about. Loyola held Illinois to f down to 58 points and you had St. Bonaventure beating Michigan. We can all agree your bracket is ass. Yeah, I mean, again, you can't disagree with it. You can't disagree with these comments, unfortunately. It's not a good bracket. Man went out and made this just to have video proof of the worst bracket in history. Uh, okay, I understand. I mean, I wouldn't go that far, right? It's not the worst bracket in history. This is the ninth percentile. It's climbing, guys. It's climbing. The first time I checked my bracket, it was in the second percentile. Then I checked again, it moved up to the seventh. Now it's at the ninth, guys. My bracket is recovering, okay? It's recovering. Uh... You were right. There were tons of upsets. Just the ones you didn't pick. <laughs> yep, LOL. Uh, I really didn't think there were that many upsets, guys. Maybe I'm just being delusional because I picked a ton of upsets like St. Bonaventure going to the Elite Eight. Um, I, the Ohio State Oral Roberts was pretty much the only huge upset. I mean, if you want to call you know, Ohio over Virginia that big of an upset, I really wouldn't call it. If you want to call North Texas over Purdue, I guess the Texas Abilene Christian game was a big upset, but I really didn't think there were like that an absurd amount of upsets this year. Like I thought because of COVID, it was going to screw with the tournament and it was going to, you know, the teams were going to go crazy. There were going to be major upsets. I had Liberty winning. I, you know, I had Arkansas losing game one to Colgate. Um, so I had a lot of upsets. I really didn't think that many happened. I mean, I guess that's just because, I don't know. I, I guess I had the wrong upsets, right? A lot of the wrong upsets. Great video, man. Seems like you really know what you're talking about. Love the bold upset predictions. Eddie, my man. Thank you. I'm getting, see the thing is guys, my channel is getting support, right? I'm getting support comments. You can see this. The best college basketball YouTuber out there. Keep up the great work. Excited for more vids. Guys, this was not me. I did not write this, Okay. I'm getting a major support from people. I didn't write this. This is not me on a burner account. This is Win. I don't know a dude named Win, but I got to support him. Thank you for that. Uh, love the Colgate prediction. I loved it too, especially when Colgate was up by, what was it, 14 points in the first half with five minutes left, and then you're somehow down by three at the end of the first half. i never seen something like that before. Yeah, the Colgate pick. You're looking at a team like Arkansas. Guys, how about Arkansas beating Oral Roberts by two points? If Arkansas is facing any other team other than Oral Roberts, they're losing that game. They get Oral Roberts in the Sweet 16 because Ohio State gets upset, because Florida can't win. It's ridiculous. 
Hey, dumbass, Arkansas made the Sweet 16. Pretty sure Florida did too. No, they didn't. They lost to Oral Roberts and Alabama. Did you say no SEC teams would make it? Yes, I famously did say, going back to my uh, Bracketology update videos, I think my Bracketology 1.0 or 2.0 back on like March 1st, I did famously say that no sweet, no SEC teams would make the Sweet 16 because I thought Colgate could have beaten Arkansas. I mean, you look at Arkansas making the Elite Eight. They're facing Oral Roberts. I mean, they win by two points. Give me a break. Alabama, thank God they lost last night. Good Lord. You know, I checked the score of that game. UCLA was up by 11 at half or whatever. I was like, thank the Lord. And then it was tied with like a minute left, and I was like, oh. So UCLA comes back to win it in overtime. Alabama missed a ton of free throws. I don't care. Thank God. And then this person, they're very obviously SEC fans. They're very illiterate. They um, they say Florida made the Sweet 16. Yes, Florida definitely did make the Sweet 16. Uh, you are stupid and destroyed my bracket. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there was actually a comment I saw where I was just, I literally started busting out laughing out loud because it was so funny. I couldn't find it. I was like scrolling back through, taking screenshots of all these comments so I could react to them. <laughs> the comment was like, was the comment was like, I took your advice and now I'm in last place in my family league. Thanks a lot. <laughs> last place in my family league. <laughs> like they they must have done a bracket family thing. And apparently he's in last place because he took my advice. There were a lot of comments like this. I'm surprised so many people took my advice. I am sorry. I it is true though. I did get 98th percentile in the 2019 bracket challenge. Um, here's another SEC fan. You're an idiot. You'll get like five right. Alabama will make the final four. Don't think so. And St. Bonaventure sucks. LSU will rail them. My sister makes better picks than you, and she's never watched a basketball game in her life. Again, guys, it, the influx of these delusional, ignorant SEC fans, when's the last time Alabama's been relevant in college basketball? Their fan base is so annoying. They know nothing about college basketball. They know nothing about sport. The sport, they probably haven't watched a Sweet 16 game in God knows how long. And all, oh my God, yes, Alabama will make the Final Four. They're already out. And thank God they're out. God, I cannot stand that team. This dude's bracket went to shit and he went ballistic. Yeah, I got a lot of hate on my last video where I was making Sweet 16 picks because I people thought I hated on every team. The problem is, it's just like you're talking about Arkansas. Like, dude, I don't know, man. These teams, you know, obviously, it's, it's whatever. People thought I hated on every team, I guess, during my last update. So I got a lot of hate on it. I don't know. Ginge, it's a one-game sample, guys. Don't worry. Also, Ginge, oh, they struggled with Rutgers. Look for an upset. But then this one, Ginge, it's a one-game sample size. Ginge, I watched one possession of the Illinois Loyola game. That is true. <laughs> that is true. I did watch one possession of the Illinois Loyola Chicago game. No, the thing is, I was watching, I turned on the Illinois Loyola Chicago game. It was the like, there was like 17 minutes left in the second half. I had checked the ESPN app and Loyola Chicago was up by like eight. Right, because they it, like Loyola Chicago had built up a lead and they didn't lose it. So I checked the app and I was like, what's going on here? So I turned on the game and I, it was a Loyola Chicago possession and I watched it from the start to the finish. It was some white boy who was probably like 5'8", well he wasn't 5'8", but like 5'11", dribbling around the top of the key and then with like three seconds left on the shot clock, literally corksing a foul pump faking and then like with this weird look on his face leaning into the Illinois defender like Wah! and getting a foul call and getting two free throws and I just turned the game off and I am happy Loyola Chicago lost to I don't know, Oregon State yeah what a, yeah this bra this tournament is really great Our, one of the sweet 16 games was Loyola Chicago and Oregon State and how many points did Loyola Chicago score in the first half of that game like 17 guys come on the thing is like I love March Madness, but let's not admit this tournament has been bad. It has been bad. And I'm not just saying that because my bracket was terrible. I'll admit my bracket was terrible. I agree. But this tournament, I mean, we get all these influx of ignorant SEC fans who haven't watched a Sweet 16 game in their life, and now they think they know everything. Oh, man. And then Arkansas fans are going to beat their chest because they beat Oral Roberts by two points? Come on, guys. Really? Give me a break, guys. But guys, I just wanted to go over some of these comments I got. When it comes to, you know, I'll, I will do an update, I guess, on my bracket. Like I said, it is just going to come down to Gonzaga and Baylor. Uh, USC has just been a pain in my you-know-what. I mean, I just, they were, what were they, 10 of 17 from three? 
It's just whatever, dude. They beat Oregon. I mean, it, it really wouldn't have mattered if Oregon would have won because I had Kansas winning that game anyway, so it wasn't like I was going to get points. Uh, but in my second chance bracket, I did have Oregon over USC, and then I have Baylor, and then obviously I think Baylor's seven-point favorites right now over Arkansas. I have not seen the line yet for the Gonzaga-USC game because uh, USC... Uh, that game finished so late last night, so I haven't seen a line yet for that. But Gonzaga destroys Creighton; um, they just annihilated Creighton. It was almost like they were like they were dis like they felt disrespected. Creighton was even like trying to like compete with them. It was crazy. That game was a lot worse than the score says. I know it says they won by 18. It seemed like they were winning by 40. I mean, they were just destroying them in the second half. And then we have, thank God, UCLA beating Alabama. I would have loved to see Michigan lose. But Florida State, you know, they got destroyed. There's nothing you can say about that. That's an impressive win for Michigan. This game, bye-bye Loyola. Sick of them. And then, how about, this is so funny. So one of my final four picks, picks the boldest one was San Diego State. They famously lost to Syracuse the first, first night. So one of my final four picks was out the first night of the tournament. And Syracuse shot... 15 of 27 from three that night against San Diego State. What happens when you don't shoot 15 of 27 from three? You score 46 points. Hilarious, man. Unbelievable. So, guys, that's kind of where that stands. And then you go to... See, this is always annoying to do this. Like, I can never find my second chance bracket. Like, you have to go back. Where is my... See, this is so stupid. ESPN still is autistic with this. Okay, here it is. You have to like go all the way back to the home screen. So then my second chance bracket, I got five of eight picks right, which is probably pretty average. So I'm in the 70th percentile in this, which is just, I guess, average. Um, I had the Gonzaga game right. Obviously, I'm sure everyone did. I had the Oregon game wrong. USC, again, they're just a pain in my side. The thing is, it's not even like Evan Mobley's playing that well. The dude had like 10 and 6 and people are like, oh, Evan Mobley, Evan Mobley. He had like 10 and 6 and his brother didn't do anything either. Uh, I had the Michigan-Florida State game wrong. There's really nothing I can say about that. Michigan just trounced them. I had the UCLA-Alabama game right. And then I had the Baylor-Villanova game right. I'm sure most people had that one right. Although Villanova was up there for a little bit, but then turned out uh, Baylor won. And then Arkansas-Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts actually was up for a while in that game. They led for most of it, but Arkansas came back and won. And then I did pick Loyola-Chicago. See, that's how much I hate Loyola-Chicago. The one time I pick them, they lose. But I'm happy they lost. So Oregon State advances. And then, you know, I'm sure a lot of people had Houston beating Syracuse. Syracuse being an 11 seed. So in this bracket, I do have three of my four final four teams, I guess. Gonzaga, Baylor, Houston. Um, we'll see how I do in this one. So 70th percentile, really just average. Um, nothing really special. I had one uh, upset pick right. My other upset picks did not go well. So guys, that is going to do it. Just thought I would read some mean tweets. You know, you're going to get them. I understand. Uh, you talk a big game, you talk about the tournament guys, but we really, these are one game sample sizes, right? They really don't determine a lot. Um, well, they determine a lot, but I'm just saying like in terms of the, who, who, who is a better overall team, I still think Illinois is a top four team in college basketball, but they were out in the second round and that's how college basketball is. And that's what makes March Madness great. And guys, my bracket was really bad. I can I cannot deny it. I am sorry from the bottom of my heart for everyone that took my advice this March Madness year. I have to own up to it. I told people, you know, I did finish in the 98th percentile back in the last March Madness tournament in 2019. This one, it's looking a lot worse. I might be able to get to the 50th percentile if Gonzaga and Baylor play, but even then, I don't know because everyone has Gonzaga winning the championship. So it's like, even if I got a lot of points, other people are also going to get a lot of points. So guys, thank you for watching this video, guys. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I am, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.